impromptu. Uh, I guess just open up recruiting. How are things sitting within the 23 class, 24 class? How are you guys feeling about some of uh, the situations? Yeah, good. I mean, there, there's uh, there's a lot of change right now, and there's a lot uh, going on. So we're still uh, on a daily basis, hourly. Things are changing, and so we're just working through all of those things. But at the end of the day, you know, it still it still comes down to relationships, and it still comes down to you know putting a plan together for each of the recruits and their families. Uh, so when they get here, it's the focus is on development in all areas. So, but there are certainly a lot of more dynamics at play than there were uh, last year. Can you yeah, touch with your that? with your I mean you have CJ, Kyle, Devin, like three, four, five star, whatever. How does that change your philosophy? I know you like to bring in one of those top tier guys every year. Is that changing your philosophy because of how stacked the quarterback team is? Uh, we, we, we try to go recruit the best players in the country every year and you know, I mean the, the goal is that if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. So uh, the guys who are highly competitive, you know, jump in with two feet. Right, can you touch on that? changes you're talking about I mean is it is it we're not out there with so I'm not <laughs> but is it wild wild west like we're talking like it's been portrayed and uh, what do you see coming down the road that's going to change any of that well I think there's risk everywhere you know there's risk if you do nothing yeah you get left behind if you go the other end there's risk that you can you get fired for cause or crossing the line so Finding that sweet spot is where the challenge is right now. And when uh, there aren't clear-cut rules or uh, rules that are uh, being enforced, that it creates hard feelings and unrest. And I think that's where we are right now. And are you feeling, I mean, I talk with you about this. I know you're not allowed to give inducements, NIL inducements. You're not allowed to give. But it's happening. We all know what's happening. How hard is it to compete with that and deal with that landscape? Well, yeah, it's a challenge because um, there are rules in place that um, right now are not being enforced. So it does create hard feelings. And so, you know, again, that's that's kind of where we are right now is finding our way in that uh, in, in those battles. Do you want there to be more rules and more enforcement? Well, I think we all do much better uh, when there, it's black and white, you know, and uh, it's gray. And so uh, I think the easy thing to do is throw up your hands and complain. Uh, but we're going to adapt and, and figure out a way to make it work for our state. Tony Alford said that uh, you might have something to announce on Marcus Crowley. Kind of what's his status right now? Oh, uh, yeah. So Marcus, um, uh, we met with his family last night. We're going to be doing a medical red shirt uh, for, for Marcus. He has a long-term injury there. And, you know, he really wants to finish his degree and still be a part of the program, which he will. Uh, but he suffered a significant injury, and so um, so he's got a medical return. So will he not be returning to the field? Right. Not retirement. That's right, yep. yep. And uh, Mitchell Melton, uh, Jim Knowles said that, you know, it's probably going to be tough for him to come back. Just kind of what do you see as a prognosis there? For who? For, Mitchell Melton. Yeah, that'll be another long term. Uh, it was an ACL, and um, you know, we, we don't get into too many of those things. But when it's a long term injury like that, so, you know, he'll be on the road to recovery. And, we saw him earlier today with his family, and you know, it's it's hard when, when you um, you know embrace these injuries because you know it's going to be a long road back, and, and that's why it was so important to you know have Adam Stewart still be a part of the program because he's a big part of their lives and their recovery and their rehab, and uh, he's the best in the business. So the good news is you know we have great resources and these guys are in good hands. The, the negative is it's a long road back to recovery. So, Ryan, when you look back at the spring game, watch the film, what are things maybe on? each side of the ball that really stood out to you that maybe you didn't notice when we talked to you after the game? Uh, I, there's not one thing more than another. I mean, I think that uh, you know, we've got to get the depth going in the, the second that offensive line for sure. Uh, we were down some guys because of injury, but uh, but other than that, I mean, we just wanted to get guys out there and try to keep everybody as healthy as we possibly could. We took one injury, uh, but that was just, you know, we tried to keep it pretty vanilla there and just have some fun with the guys and go play. Uh, but it was good to tackle. It was good to see guys um, you know, take guys to the ground, and, and that was good. We'll do some more of that this season. Ryan, we talked with Brian Hartline about uh, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson going back to back in the draft. You talked about the joy he had getting getting to develop them, see them on draft night. What was your perspective of seeing Brian Hartline and his feelings for Chris and Garrett getting drafted? Well, it's emotional, and when, when you go through the recruiting process with a family, you sit down and you talk to them about the dream of moving on to the NFL. Um, certainly, you have to start off with doing well at Ohio State, but, but that obviously happened, and 
Uh, I think it was great. In the green room, they, they, their coaches were back to back. So it was really neat to see that all the families and, and see certainly Chris and, and Garrett there. But then to watch them go back to back like that was great. Uh, a lot of emotion and uh, a lot of emotion for the family. Uh, but. It, it's just great to be a part of it. Certainly, that's not that's a moment for us to step step back, but also make sure that we're there and supportive of them as they take the next step in, in their journey. How did Couple you feel more for Brian Hartline to see two receivers going first round after the wide receiver history in the NFL draft year? To see that for Brian Hartline, just what were your feelings today? Well, it's exciting. Like I said, it's it's a very very exciting time to be a quarterback and, and a wide receiver. And I think you know uh, Dwayne really kind of broke the mold and became the first you know first rounder at quarterback in, in a long time here, and then. And then now you're starting to see, uh, and then, then Justin, and now you're starting to see some of those the wide receivers, certainly what Terry's doing and Michael Thomas is doing in Paris. And some of our guys that are having success in the NFL, you're seeing that carry over. And you're seeing some of the recruiting start to reflect that as well. And now you're seeing a couple of guys going in the first round. So it's starting to pick up a lot of momentum. So it's very exciting recruiting to be in that area. Yeah, I was about to ask, I mean, could you have had a better recruiting pitch than both of them going back to back on that Thursday? Night? I think it's testimony. Yeah. You know, We've talked about this for a long time in recruiting, and now, now you're seeing it actually happen. So I think the recruits, that, that's that's a really important part of recruiting is the development. Certainly all the NIL and all the things that are going on right now are part of it. But what really matters is their development in the end. Uh, and for the guys who are focused on that and want to develop and become really good college players and possibly being NFL draft picks, then Ohio State's a great option. Brian, you had a couple weeks ago, so not really since spring practice why do you need to see this to make you feel like you guys are ready for fall camp? I, I just think it's going to be um, fundamentals in all areas. I think we just got to continue to grow with leadership, and uh, you know we now have spring cutups on defense to watch, where guys can watch themselves and watch their fundamentals, but also watch this, the scheme and watch the cutups and the teach tapes and build off of that. It's the same thing on offense. We now have that stuff that they can watch themselves in the spring. The good thing on offense is we have the spring and we have the fall to really go off of. So. Uh, we got the work to do in the weight room, but the, we also have to do the work in terms of you know, coming from the spring, watching the cutups, and getting better at the things we need to improve on. Each player has been told the things that they need to improve on and the things they did well coming out of the spring individually. To have the, the cutoff of the transfer basically, how much does that, what good can that do for, for coaches to know exactly who's going to be on the roster next fall? In the May, instead of having it completely open. Yeah, I think it was a good thing that, that happened uh, with the cutoff because uh, it, it really cuts down the noise. I think that for a lot of these players right now, whether it's family or agents or just people in general, there's a lot of noise out there. And so this kind of quiets down that noise and allows them to focus on what's important right now. Right, I think the numbers are, if you look, last two questions, last August, I think it's like 16 or 17 guys who transferred out from Ohio State, and I think three in. Almost everybody who left are guys who were down the depth chart, going yeah. somewhere where they could play. Just like those raw numbers. Yeah. Is that a is that a okay balance for you? Do you think like the the intention of the one time transfer is working? I think it's a little bit of the combination of COVID and, and that extra year being mixed in. But but our our goal is always to recruit high school players and develop them while they're here. And if it works, then they get on the field. If it doesn't, then you know. Uh, not that I like it, but there's an opportunity for some people to find other places to play. And so what we've, we've done is we've just done a really good job of identifying the high school kids that we want to recruit and develop them. Um, you know, we really haven't spent a lot of time focusing on the transfer portal because I think if you want to sustain the program for a long period of time, I think recruits and their families, when you recruit them and talk to them about the plan for them to develop in your program, they, they want to see that happen and they really don't want to see a transfer come in and, and jump somebody in line. And so, uh, when there is a hole, we've done it before. You know, we've had Trevion, we've had I mean, uh, Trey Sermon, we've had um, uh, Justin, we've had Jonah Jackson, we had Noah Ruggles. So we've had our, our fair share of transfers, but um, but but it's not something we want to rely on. It is almost like official program position that maybe you would not take a transfer who might be a very good player if it feels like he would jump the line of a player who is developing on track in your program where there's there's not a hole in that position, would you almost feel like that's sort of unfair or something, that you would not target a transfer like that? Well, I think you're being a little bit disingenuous. If on the front end you're talking to your your families and your recruits about the, the, the opportunity to play at Ohio State and then just to go get try to get the best player out in front of him, you know, that's that can create some hard feelings. Now, if it's appropriate, we'll do that. 
Uh, we didn't see that happen in this this uh, turn uh, or this uh, recruiting cycle. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we have somebody that we've hired just to identify guys who are in the portal. Uh, Ryan Kavanaugh does an unbelievable job. He spent uh, over a decade in the NFL of identifying players. He, he evaluates our team and he evaluates all the transfer uh, guys in the portal. And, and if it fits right, then we'll do it. But we are making sure that we're taking care of the guys on our team first. Do you have and room, last question. Do you have room to add anybody, or do you expect your roster is pretty much set at this point? Right, right now we're at 85. Yeah. Do you expect Noah yeah. Ruggles back? Uh, yes. Is he, ba- is he back? Yeah. 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 Did, did he take, like, basically a hiatus this past past semester? I mean, uh, how would you explain it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, you know, he needed a little time away, and so, uh, but he's back. Gotcha. Yeah. Is that Hickory's? Do you have?